Hello YouTube, I'm Pedro from the Wicked Cat team. On the following videos we are going to cover Lightning in Unity 5. For today we are going to take a quick look at the two remaining types of light in Unity. The area and the directional light. If you enjoy this video remember to leave a like. And if you want more Unity 5 tutorials remember to subscribe to our channel. As usual, as you guys can see, I'm still using the same scene that I used in the previous videos. Now, before we move on, let's first turn off our spotlight. So, we select, let me just select the spotlight and disable it. And now, let's add an area light to our scene. So, to do that, we go to main menu game object, light and we select area light. So we have an area light in our scene and now we have to place it inside our our box. So our box is in the center so let's just see 0, 0, 0. Okay, so now I change this to orthof orthographic view let me just make this go up a little make me go to the top and now what I'm actually going to do is to change the width and the height of the area light in order to cover uh, all the area inside the box so I go to here with more perhaps six will be work fine yes it seems to will be working and now the height something like this yes so as you guys can see here on perspective we now have like this plane here with these um, yellow lines that is the area that will be affected by our area light so before we move on let's talk a little bit about this type of light so an area light is a light that shines in all directions to one side of a rectangle, rectangular area of a plane that we actually have in this area the rectangle is defined by the width and the height properties that you can see here and that I just change, just change it to match the size of our box um, uh, please note that the area lights are only available during light map baking this means they have no effect on objects at runtime so you don't have the, the, the direct um, effect on objects during runtime, meaning that you have, for example, no shadows. Now, let's take a quick look at the parameters. And as you guys can see, most of the parameters here are similar to the previous slides. For example, we have the, the type exactly the same as the others, where you can choose spot, directional point, or area. We have the draw hello that works exactly like before, the flare, the render mode, exactly the same exact options and also the culling masks. So nothing here, new here, um, but let's take a, a closer look to the parameters that are specific to the, to the area light. So the following ones, the first two parameters are with and height uh, and they are used to set the size of the rectangular light area that we just did to match the, the box now the following parameter is color and will set the color of the light emitted so let's change this for example to red okay next on the intensity we set the brightness of the light um, the default value is usually 1, but we can make it a little bit brighter. And you can also change the boss intensity. 
which is the intensity that the light bounces on game objects so let's just this a little bit and as you can see right here Unis unity right now is making the light maps for our scene so let's wait a little bit while it calculates and you guys already can see our light in action so we already have this like reddish color in our objects right so if I press play we should see it in action so as you can see the area light is casting its light on all objects in its range okay so in the area that we define it um, the size of the rectangle, like I said before, is determined by the width and the height properties. The side to which the light is being cast is the plane normal, so which is the same light as the positive z axis. Okay, so the light is being cast on positive x x value. Yeah, sorry, z value. Um, the light emitted from the whole surface of the ray is emitted from the whole surface uh, of the rectangle. Because of this, shadings and shadows from affected objects tend to suffer, um, tend to be much softer than with the point of directional light sources. So that's why you don't have actually um, shadow options. So the light calculations for an area light. Um, are quite processor intensive. You guys could so see saw this because, as you guys notice, it took uh, some time to do the light maps and the baking. Uh, so, because of this, they are not available on runtime and only use it as bake lights into light maps. So, they are usually um, this kind of light is a little bit expensive. So, personally, I don't use it much, but it has its functionalities as always now let's just stop this and for now let's let's just clear our area light here okay so the scene is back to, to normal and let's take a look at the last type of light that we still need to, to take to cover which is directional light. So let's select the directional light that was created by default by Unity. So as you can see in this area on the inspector, all the parameters here are common to the previous light sources. So basically nothing new here. You have the color, the intensity, the bounce intensity, you can set the baking to real time bake and mix it, you can select the type of light. We can work with the shadows exactly with we have exactly the same options that you did before we have cookie draw hello flare render mode and cooling mask so basically you have nothing new here the thing to notice here is that you can change the direction of the light by changing the rotation of the game object so if I actually go to rotation this will affect, as you guys can see, the light in our scene. So directional lights are most usually use, used for uh, outdoor scenes to simulate the sun and the moonlight uh, as they affect all surface of the objects in the scene. Also they are the least expensive to the graphics processor. Ok guys, so this concludes our tutorial on area and directional lights. On the next video we are going to talk about reflection probes. Hope, to, hope you guys enjoyed it, until then, have a nice day.